And Lillian, tell me when it is okay for me to get started. I'll let you know. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, that likes me better. Okay, we are ready. All righty then. All right. This meeting of the Sunnyvale Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission is called to order at 6.33 p.m. Before we get started, I'd like to remind the BPAC of some procedural items for this meeting. During the meeting, the BPAC and participants should remain muted when not speaking. If the BPAC or participants have a question or comment, please use the raise hand feature. Uh, speakers will be called upon to speak one at a time in the order in which they raise their hands. A random order voice vote will be administered by city staff for each vote. This BPAC meeting is being conducted utilizing teleconferencing and electronic means of uh, consistent with State of California Executive Order N29-20 regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Automatically generated captions are available to viewers accessing this meeting via Zoom. Captions can be displayed or hidden using the live transcript button. Uh, members of the public may provide audio public comment uh, by connecting to the teleconference meeting online or by telephone. Use the raise hand feature to request to speak star nine on your telephone. Teleconference meeting details and how to provide audio public comments during the meeting are available on the BPAC meeting agenda, which you can find under the meetings and agendas section of the Sunnyvale City website at sunnyvale.ca.gov. Comments on matters not on the agenda must be submitted prior to the time the chair calls the item for oral communications. Comments on agenda items must be submitted prior to the time the chair closes the public hearing on an agenda item. Speakers are requested to keep their comments to no more than three minutes and time limits will be enforced. Guidelines are posted on the BPAC meeting agenda. Again, that agenda is at sunnyvale.ca.gov. City staff, may we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Cordes. Present. Commissioner Oi. Present. Commissioner Dave. Present. Um, Commissioner Swale. Present. Chair Mellinger. Present. Vice Chair Melman. Present. Commissioner Haveman. Present. Fantastic. Seven present and accounted for, as well as who do you have back there, Leia? Skittles. <laughs> Skittles. Okay. As well as Lambert. Honorable Commissioner Skittles. <laughs> um, all right. Next up, we have the oral communications. This category provides an opportunity for members of the public to address the Sunnyvale Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission on items not listed on the agenda and is limited to 15 minutes with a maximum of up to three minutes per speaker. Please note that the Brown Act open meeting law does not allow the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission to take action on an item not listed on the agenda. If you wish to address the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission, please refer to the notice at the beginning of the agenda. Individuals are limited to one appearance during this section. Uh, city staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak? Um, I, there is no member of the public wanting to speak at this moment. All right, thank you very much. So I'm going to open the public hearing for oral communication, seeing no members of the public wishing to speak, and indeed no members of the public, I'm going to close oral communications. Next up is the consent calendar. Uh, do we have a motion on the consent calendar? Well, first off, do we have any members of the public wishing to give comment on the consent calendar? I don't see any hands raised. Open the public hearing, close the public hearing. Do we have a motion on the consent calendar? I move that we accept, that we uh, uh, approve the consent calendar. All right, is there a second? Second. Uh, Commissioner Haithman moves, Vice Chair Melman seconds. Is there any discussion on the consent calendar? Seeing and hearing none, may we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Owe? Yes. Um, Chair Mallinger? Aye. Commissioner Swale? Aye. Commissioner Haithman? Aye. 
Commissioner Davi? Aye. V uh, Vice Chair Melman? Aye. Commissioner Cordes? Aye. The vote carry out by um, seven yes and zero no for this item. Fantastic. The consent calendar is therefore approved. Next up, agenda item two, file number 21-0584, review fiscal year 21-22 recommended budget. Do we have a staff report? Um, so the tw the fiscal year 2021-22 recommended budget was delivered to City Council um, on Monday, May 10th. The budget workshop was held this, um, today um, and the Annual Council public hearing on, um, on the budgets will be held on Tuesday, June 8th. Um, the budget adoption is scheduled to be on Tuesday, June 15th. So volume one of the um, recommended budget is, contains the operating budgets um, for the city. And volume two of the recommended budget contains the cap capital improvement projects um, for, for the city. And for transportation and traffic related projects, um, they are they, they start on page 61 through 165. All right. And if that concludes the staff report, do we have any members of the commission with questions for city staff on the budget? As a brief reminder, um, before we hear, actually, you know what I'm gonna do, seeing no members of the public in attendance, I'm just going to open the public hearing now. If any members of the public wishes wish to speak on this item, go ahead and raise your hand. Seeing no members of the public wishing to speak on this item, I'm going to close the public hearing and bring this back to the commission. Commissioner Wee. I have a question. Um, <clears throat> Is it possible for staff to put an analysis together just to, I'd like to know from the traffic transportation space, how much money we spend on roughly, not, not exactly, but on bicycle stuff, on pedestrian stuff, and on motor vehicle stuff in the traffic space. I, mean, I can sort of suss it out, but I have to do a lot of separate math. I was wondering if that's something that staff could put together at some point. Is that a reasonable request? Um, so because the, when we put in the individual projects, we actually don't classify them, whether, you know, the type of projects they are. So we don't have an easy way to tabulate these data. It, I, somehow I'd like to know just what our spending mix is for a budget and know that, oh, this is about how much we're contributing to the bicycle improvements, how much we're contributing to pedestrians and how much we're contributing to stuff focused on motor vehicles. Um, I've tried to figure out how to, to do that calculation. So I can see just overall what, what's our spending mix. It's like my asset mix for Fidelity. I can actually see how much in bonds, how much in stocks, how much whatever. I just push a button, it just pops out for me. <laughs> I wish I had that kind of thing here. So I could see, yeah. I liked, I was really impressed actually with the number of projects that I could, I could identify that a lot of them have a lot of uh, bicycle and pedestrian improvements, which is great. Um, but I was, it was hard for me to figure out. So I'm not sure you know, what those amounts are. It, it, I, I'll just add it, it won't be, it'll be very difficult and it's not an exact science because some projects cover, span all three modes. So yes. then the numbers, you, if you're going to look at the whole total value and then just want to add it all up and that's the amount, it, it won't add up nice and neatly. And I wasn't saying actually for any given project, just all one way or another, but just, you know, this is about 10% pedestrian is about how much we're investing or 20% bike and ped, just a rough cut, just to get a general sense, not a very exact, but just to get a feel for how much um, our city is investing in our bike ped infrastructure versus the motor vehicle infrastructure. That's what I'm looking for. And that, that might be something that we can work on for next fiscal year. I, we won't have, I don't have that number off the top of my head or sitting in a pocket somewhere where I could run a quick spreadsheet on. Yeah. So that was my question. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Commissioner Wee. Commissioner Cordes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm trying to understand something that's confusing to me. I'm looking at page 73, project 900141. that says future traffic calming. And it says it's funded in this year of, to the tune of uh, 123,000 something dollars. Let's see, am I getting, looking at the right year? Yes, so I'm looking at the right year, $123,000. But when I go to the detail page for that project, 
it says that it's, um, it, it's estimated the average project costs $40 is, or $3,000. So this would fund 40 projects, but the page that describes this project in detail says that this is unfunded. So I'm really confused because in this budget on page 73, it says this is funded for the next 10 years. Yeah, looking at page uh, 165, it says it's an unfunded project. Um, so if you look on page 73 on the top, um, up to upper left. Oh, it's the unfunded page. Gotcha. It is the unfunded page, correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Boy, that's confusing to have an unfunded page. Yeah, it was a lot to run through. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Commissioner Cordes. Commissioner Haifman. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I have a few questions here. Um, one comment, first of all, in the, um, the um, city manager's summary, well-written document, by the way, there was no mention of bicycle improvements, no mention of the ATP. You wouldn't know Sunnyvale had a bike program at all unless you looked into the Bernardo undercrossing and even there he didn't mention it was a bicycle project. So I started reading this and I, I was thinking you know, and all the rest of the discussion in terms of transportation projects was automobile related. And so that's just a comment. I don't have a question on that. But, um, and then one of the things, another thing um, in the overview for the project's budget, it would really be nice, and of course, this is getting back to an earlier question, to break out by ped and bike from general transportation because the dollar amounts are heavily weighted towards general pop transportation. And, and there again, if somebody's taking a quick look, you wouldn't know there was any bicycle projects going on. Okay, so now I have a couple of questions. Um, in the report, in, in volume two report, it states that the Mary estimate to implement is going to be $200 million. And the question I have is, is that for the worst case four lane highway? Because we clearly haven't picked the project yet and the cost to implement the different options varies widely. So I wanted to find out what, what that $200 million meant. Sorry, I don't have a page number. I should have written the page numbers down, but I didn't. I believe it was an estimate that was prepared um, a few years ago when we developed the traffic impact fee study. Um, I believe it was um, back in 19, I mean, I'm sorry, not 19, 2006, uh, 2016, 2017 timeframe. And it was, at the time, it likely was assuming it was um, one of the worst case scenario. However, as part of the project that we're working on, we would take a look at the various um, op um, options and also do a cost estimate for each individual one. So that estimate will be updated. Okay. All righty. I figured that's probably what it was. I was just curious. Um, and then going down through these project budgets, I would say almost every project shows funding for 2021 and all subsequent years, even those that finish later on have nothing budgeted. And I didn't understand that. Is it that you don't know yet where that funding is coming from? So it just shows it zero or did they lump everything into 2021? So typically um, the budget is allocated for the year that um, the entire, typically the entire budget is allocated to the year that the project funding was allocated to the project. So the amounts that you see could be all, you know, could be shown all in one year. However, these projects sometimes could be multi-year projects. And so um, in, like for, for the first year, if we finish some part of it, um, the remaining budget will be rolled over to the years that follow um, until we finish the project. Okay, and that's true even in the case where you know you're not gonna get it done in 2021. Correct. Okay. Um, and then the last question was, I still didn't understand the unfunded. You go to the end of these projects and a whole bunch of them have the word un, unfunded. 
slapped across the front. And, and these were project, many of these projects I know don't have funding for implementation yet, but what does that mean? So these are projects that we, we in, you know, we kind of in, in we, we have a plan in the future to try to implement them. However, currently we don't have a funding mechanism for it yet. Um, and some of them are, I believe some of them a couple of them are actually in the TIFF also, which includes, um, for example, for the Wood Road Fremont El Camino improvement, El Camino Real improvement. That was one of the projects that were identified as part of um, that, which we're collecting um, TIFF money for. So some of these projects are just you know projects that we have identified that we think we would be implementing in the future. However, we haven't been able to secure f like funding for yet. Okay, and then last, specifically on that, um, the Homestead Road Bike Project. Reading about that in this budget, they're saying it hasn't been decided yet we're going to do that project. My understanding has been it's ready to go and actually is, there's going to be significant project work done on it this year, which is the correct assessment. <laughs> So um, this is actually a project that we're working on in developing, in, in trying to um, hire a consultant to perform the study. Um, so let's see, the, I'm looking at the project sheet. I believe you're referring to page 136, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so this is a follow-up study that we'll be doing where we're going to be collect data and, re, you know, review the data and then, um, and then make a determination of whether we could um, potentially convert these um, part-time bicycle lane into full-time bicycle lane. Oh, I, I, from earlier discussions, I thought that study has already been done and it's ready to be implemented. Was no. I just mistaken on that? No, that the study, we were going to um, perform the study as part of this project. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know if any other council members want to, or staff, not council, but uh, commission members want to weigh in on that because I'm kind of confused. All right, thank you very much, Commissioner Hazeman. Commissioner Cordes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to discuss project 833010 on page 116, which says bike, bicycle and sa pedestrian safety improvements. Um, it's, I assume that this is trying to fund, it kind of describes itself as being every, this, the funding source for everything in the ATP. Um, and it says that they're allocating 400K this year, but nothing in the future. Is that staff's real expectations that we're only going to fund one year of this program? So, um, for the time being, we have funding allocated um, for the for this coming for this coming fiscal year. Um, it doesn't mean that we won't, you know, the council won't be making funding allocation to improve um, to to implement bicycle or pedestrian improvements in the future. It's just that um, as we actually get um, grant opportunity and we will bring it to city council um, to ask for a local match to, um, you know, those grants applications um, as we have those opportunities. Okay. So if I try and summarize what you just said, it's it, the money's here to provide matching for grants, but this is all the city's allocating. It's hoping to get grants to fund more than the 400K. Um, so the 400K is and mostly we are hoping, you know, to use it as a matching fund. Mm -hmm. Okay. And why is it not forecasted into the future? Because I assume you're going to do the same thing every year, like you've been doing every year. <laughs> I mean, this is standard operating procedure, right? Um, Dennis, do you have any insight to that? I mean, is it just to make the budget look more balanced in 10 years that you're not forecasting any future cost or expending? 
No. So this was an old CIP project that's been around and then we haven't gotten around to actually creating a brand new one. So um, as you can see, like this was originally created in 2018 with the old, with the old, with the old bike plan. And then we've kind of, we've updated the first sentence to reflect that we, we, we city council, the city has adopted a new active transportation plan, but we haven't gotten around to really forecasting out and then filling in the future fiscal year. So we had, I had that discussion with finance already, and then I'm planning where I just need a little bit more time to, to work on that. So uh, my understanding of what you just said is that you're going to replace this project going forward with a new project ID to yes. have some other name about implementing the ATP or something like that. Yes. But it's the same situation. It's not funded yet, or you're, have an agreement on what the 10-year funding for it's going to be? Yeah, so we, because of the budget right now, we haven't come to an agreement. And then we're, we're whether or not we fund it for a certain amount, and then we have a project, as you kind of, as was previously mentioned about, in the unfunded section, mm -hmm. or we, we go through and project something. If we project something out for the full 20 years, then it, the budget has to balance all the way through. Correct. I understand. So, uh, right now, the, the city doesn't, we're trying to hold, hold, hold the line on new expenditures. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, thank you. So hopefully as the financial horizon becomes less muddy, they will able to forecast actual spending here. Because yeah. otherwise, based on this, I know Sunnyville has been spending about a million dollars a year on bike and ped projects, according to the way I account for it. And so, you know, it still would take us somewhere between 20 and 50 years to build out the ATP at that <laughs> rate. Um, my second question is related to this funding source. So it says these projects are funded through the TIF, which is great. So I thought um, TIF funds, it says a portion of the TIF funds are, are used to implement bicycle and pedestrian improvements. How is it decided what percentage of the TIF funds are allocated toward bike and ped projects, is it, is it only if you can find a, a grant to go with it? So in the, um, in the TIF study, in this TIF study that was adopted by City Council back in 2017, there's actually a breakdown on um, the amount of TIF that we anticipate will be, we will be collecting, um, what portion of it will go to bike and pet improvements and okay. individual projects. Where can I find more data on that information? information? Um, can you send something later about the TIF uh, agreements or projections from 2017? Yeah, I, I can send you that information. On, yeah, it, it is on the city uh, website from one of the previous um, city council meetings. Thank you, that's all my questions. Thank you very much, Commissioner Cordes. Um, I'm going to go to Vice Chair Melman because Commissioner Wee has already spoken. Um, yes, so I'm looking, let me go back to my thing. So I'm looking at page 119, which is the project 833790. And so um, we have, uh, we have uh, project costs and everything, um, you know, prior and actual. And then there seems to be like a gap for 21, 22. Two, and then there's like operating costs for the rest of the time. And then, so I'm looking at the year identified and the estimated completion year, and I'm just not like connecting the dots. I mean, it's, it was hard to find, to connect the dots in anything on, on the way this is broken down. Um, so um, so what, what's the story on this? <laughs> So this is a, um, a grant that we have received to upgrade, to replace um, some of the uh, rapid um, RFB, like um, some of the beacons within the city. Right. And so the, um, the idea is that we, will, we are working on it this fiscal year and we will be completing it um, next year. So, you know, we'll, be, we'll finish repair, uh, rep replacing them next fiscal year. And after that, each year we would have to um, budget. We ha we had a, an operating cost budgeted in because um, we have you know for, to operate these um, beacons. Um, there are certain operating budget that we need to assume, in, you know, including you know the maintenance costs or the electricity cost. 
Yeah, and I noticed that the 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 placement uh, thing it's stating that it's replacing four every ten years, which seems rather glacially slow for something that's so critical to public safety. So, um, you know, is it because we have so few, or is it because we're not? It, and these are just replacement costs. This is not new infrastructure. Um, so the, it is because of, you know, like grants funding opportunity. This is um, one of the grants that we have received as part of the um, vehicle emission reduction based uh -huh. program. Right. program. Right. So for the amounts that, you know, we were able to secure from this grant, um, it was enough to um, replace four of them. Every 10 so, years. So just to be clear, this project is actually not replacing anything. This project is to install new RFBs at school crossings, at, at four particular school crossings. There is a paragraph in there identifying that once we build them, the right. infrastructure cost is 196,000 to be replaced at 10 year intervals to replace oh, okay. the four RFBs every 10 years at a cost of $49,000. Each. Each. Right, right. So it's not talking about we're not replacing anything every four years with this grant project. This grant project is paying. going to apply for more safe routes to school improvements or more bicycle improvements, then we program that we pre staff prepares a grant application at that point. Okay. But it's all, it's going forward uh, for future grant applications, we're going to be following the HTP and then what the, what the safe routes to school plans are for each school, we'll implement them at various points or we implement bicycle improvements or pedestrian improvements identified in there. So when it says estimated completion year, is that completion year of the grant funding or completion year of the, the capital improvement project? Of the capital improvement project. Okay. So that's why in 21-22, there is no funding in there. We're anticipated to be under construction in 21-22. Okay. And sustained for Homestead Road and, and so on. It's the typical pattern that we'll follow for okay. in our CIP budget book, yes. Okay, so then um, the pavement standards. Um, this was identified like in 2018. So we're talking some time ago at this point, now six years, uh, five years. And so, um, and, and I, you know, there's, there, there's no funding and it looks like there's no, there's no activity. Uh, or is it, I'm sorry, fifty thousand dollars. Sorry, sorry. Small font. I my apologies. <laughs> so um, you know, it, it's fifty thousand dollars for twenty one twenty two. Okay. And uh, which CIP was that? Uh, that is the eight three three zero three zero. The pavement standards, which is on page one eighteen. Three zero. It talks about restoration techniques rehabilitation projects. Pavement oh, this is to actually develop a standards book mm -hmm. and guidelines for our staff and for engineers to use. That's right. why it's a one-time $50,000 okay. expenditure. And, and where are we on this project? Because it's supposed to be finished between, you know, this year and the next, basically. Um, that's actually handled. The project coordinator is Jim Birch. So he's our streets uh, superintendent, and then it's managed out of our project admin group. Okay. So it's, so it is probably being worked on. They may be hiring a consultant. I just don't have um, a specific update on that project okay. at this point. Yeah. It, like I said, I mean, just looking at these charts, it's just when you see all these dotted lines and I realize, you know, it, you're talking about projections and stuff like that. It's just difficult to assess. Well, um, the adequacy of projected funding when it's when uh, I mean when it's not even a hypothetical. 
where, where you can also look is also in that top header, there's yeah. a project phase. So that's under design. Right. So as opposed to, if you look at some other ones, they're under construction. Right. And then and there's some that will say planning. Design, some are planning, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, you know, my only other comment actually is just that it's, it's um, kind of daunting when you go back to the um, unfunded projects page and you see how many things which are critical to our um, ATP, which have nothing identified or, and nothing anticipated at this point. And I realize we just had passed it and everything, but it's just, um, it just feels like we're going to go down the same road when 10 years from now, we're still not going to have, you know, things done that we, we had asked for, you know, in the new plan versus the old plan. But um, uh, hopefully uh, I realize, you know, we're talking in the middle of a pandemic and everything like that. Um, but uh, it's just, uh, it's just, you know, things like the bicycle map revision, which is uh, identified in 2004 and it's still in the planning phase, you know, 15 years <laughs> and it's still in the planning phase. <laughs> Yeah. Well, specifically that one, we, it's periodic updates. So there's funding throughout. So then right, I see the funding throughout, but I meant, you know, when, it, when you see stuff in the planning stage, rather than, I, I guess, is there a stage called implementation or, or is it just called underway? <laughs> it, it continuously cycles because then each, when we do, when we start a process, we reset it back to planning as opposed to implementation or design. Oh. And then, so like we're constantly updating the bike map and then we're constantly hiring every few years. We're hiring a consultant to help us update it. And then we're okay. working through the design of it. Okay. I always feel like there needs to be like a, an additional header on this thing where it says current status and then future status or something like that. Cause you have plans and goals and stuff like that, but it doesn't give you any idea looking at this, that of the cyclical nature of it. It just looks like you have a, a project that's been in the planning phase for 15 years. I mean, looking at it with the eye of someone like me who has no concept of, of um, you know, a, 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 as an average citizen. Yeah, it's, it's transportation is a little bit unique because we do have all these cyclical infrastructure things that happen throughout that have a constant long life through them right. as opposed to a typical CIP where it's a one-time deal where you get the funding, you hire a consultant, you design it, you construct it, and right. then it's done. So is so. there a reason for the way that these um, things are dictated? I mean, is it is it like a, is this format uh, specified by some regulatory process or other? Or can we amend like uh, to add a header under these projects where it says, you know, current status and future status? This is, these are pretty much all um, standard, C, standard um, what I'll call budget sheets for, for CIPs. So if you look across jurisdictions, they look very similar to this. So it's and kind they, of dictated by your software or whatever you're using, right? Um, that's, it's from our finance, it's from our finance department side of mm -hmm. things where they, okay. they manage that. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate your putting up with my, um, my questioning. All right. Thank you very much, Vice Chair Melman. Um, I'm going to cut in now because both Commissioner Lee and Commissioner Cordes have spoken. I just want to say that the suggestion on an infrastructure breakdown that we heard from Commissioner Haifman and Commissioner Lee, I think that's an excellent suggestion and that we I hope that we take that approach for next year's budget. Obviously, it's a little late to implement that for this year's, but I would love in next year's budget to have uh, something a bit more explicit, possibly in the city manager summary, calling out the uh, you know notable bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure, and to have that breakdown chart. Um, and that's my comment. Uh, next up, Commissioner Wee. Thank you, Chair. I was muted there. Um, I just have a few little, it's really helpful to actually look at this budget and I see lots of things that uh, trigger um, me little, little, little questions. So I'm just gonna be hopping around. 
um, on 118, the pavement standards. Uh, do we have a bicycle pavement standards as such as part of that? Because it does mention this effective multimodal transportation system. Is that included in the study? We, I will have to check with the project manager to see if that is included as part of this project. It's just an ongoing thing as a bicyclist. I'm in the bike lane. Often it's a lot bumpier and not as well maintained as the main traffic lane. I was curious whether you know, that's accounted for so that bicyclists have um, smooth spaces that aren't sort of neglected. Um, in um, page 114, the Sunnyvale traffic signal upgrades I mentioned improved bicycle detection systems. Is that something you could comment now? Or I, I'm very curious, I, I pay a lot of, I spend a lot of time at traffic lights wondering, okay, am I gonna set this one off or not? And I can recognize the loop detection. I recognized the, um, the video camera. And I have noticed some intersections may have, they may go into some different technologies on because I noticed they're actually triggering well before I entered the intersection and in Palo Alto in particular, I think I've run across a few of those, maybe Mountain View. It is rare, but every now and then it's like, wow, that actually saw me and I know no one else was around. I was the only thing triggering it. I'm trying to figure out, I just like to know a little bit more about bicycle detection systems and where we're currently headed with those. And if you don't have the answer now, that'd be a great little presentation in the future for us. Um, so we understand more how our traffic system works. Because as a cyclist, sometimes you're wondering, how do I set this thing one off? And to know what technologies are around and how best to figure them is useful as a bicyclist. So I'll answer that one, Lillian. It's, it's a constant evolving technology that we're going through. So the city is always looking at new things. Um, the old standard is the in-pavement loops. So that's where you see the asphalt cuts in the roadway with the black rubberized tar that's filled in there. And then the next, next generation is the video cameras, which basically looks at pixel changes. So for the bicyclist, it's make yourself as big as possible. And then um, we're currently trying out some new technology, which is a combination of uh, video cameras and radar sensors. So then it can see a little bit farther. Video camera, they, each of them has their own pros and cons. There hasn't been one technology that's the greatest on earth that everybody's gonna adopt because of that. They, they all have some little idiosyncrasies that cause them to not be 100% accurate. Like loops are subject to, pick, to construction damage. Mm -hmm. Video cameras are subject to being blinded by the sun during sunrise or sunset. Fog comes in, it blinds it. And then um, there's the magnetometers. The, they, there isn't one that's truly 100% reliable. We're trying all sorts of things. Uh, one thing that is really interesting that's piqued our attention is a manufacturer that's, uh, that provides a detection sign for bicyclists. So it's mounted on the side of the road and it has a picture of a bicyclist, it lights up green if the bicyclist has been detected. So you know that when you roll up there, the camera or the, the radar unit is functioning. That is uh, excellent. That was exactly what I was hoping because as a pedestrian, now the newer system, you can say, oh, I know I hit the button because it's changed. As cyclists, you sometimes sit in there and like, I don't know. And some, you, know, you wait a few cycles, you still don't know. And then you get frustrated. <laughs> you don't, yeah. It's so really hard. We, I completely understand. We're looking at it right now because of COVID, we've been tied up looking at um, contactless pedestrian push buttons. So that's the, the next thing that we're, we're trying out and we're activating right now in the process. Yeah, one other comment on the page 114 is all those intersections that they mentioned, I go through those all um, pretty frequently. So I'm glad that work is being done on those to make them better. Um, let's see. Uh, this is page 120, the pedestrian bicycle improvements Homestead at Homestead High School. I think might be, you may mention this before, but is there a pedestrian scramble being considered at that particular intersection? Getting mm -hmm. to Homestead High School? There is, but I don't believe that's part of this project. It actually is, Lillian. Oh, it is? Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, so that's actually under construction. We've hired a contractor. If you go out there, the contractor has started with the underground pole foundations and have started digging holes and starting work out there. So Excellent. the idea is that we want to be, under, we want to finish construction 
during the summer before the students come back in the fall. Yeah, because I have noticed a lot of students piling up and having to pile up at two corners in order to get all the way across because they want to go diagonally. Excellent. Um, and then I know, um, I think this is my final just little spot question. On page 150, Bicycle and Pedestrian Education Encouragement Program, um, we have on our work plan, I believe, we're going to have a presentation on um, these Measure B educational funds. Because I would like to see, um, I see this description here, but I'd like to know more what our education program plans are um, for the city and how much you are involved versus how much public safety is involved and how much input we can have uh, from BPAC in uh, guiding where, you know, I'm not sure how many levers we have to pull about where our education program is headed mm -hmm. for the city. Yeah, we, we are current, uh, we are coordinating with um, Department of Public Safety and try to allocate some of the funding for them to um, work on the education and encouragement side and also allocating some of the budget for us um, to work on, um, to implement some of the items that we have identified in the Vision Zero plan. Okay, and that's it for my final little detailed question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Wee, Commissioner Cordes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I realize that this is just a review item on our agenda and no vote is required, but I'd like to make a motion uh, to send to the City Council that we recommend they increase funding for implementing the ATP to $5 million a year for the next 10 years and at least get that message across consistently that we think that the current funding level is inadequate. We will not be able to achieve the implementation of the plan with the current funding level. We will also not be able to achieve our Vision Zero goals and mode shift goals with the current level of funding. So um, I'm ready to put that in a more, little bit more succinct motion format whenever you are ready. I don't see any further hands raised. So I think it is fine to entertain the motion. Is there, a, if you wanna give like a succinct version of that motion, Commissioner Cordes, and then we can ask for a second. Yes, uh, I don't know if you wanna write it down or how do you wanna do oh, that? I will write this down. Let me open up notepad real quick. All right, go ahead. The Sunnyvale Bicycle and Pedestrian Commission recommends the city council increase funding for implementing the ATP and Vision Zero plan to at least $5 million per year for the next 10 years to achieve the goals we have set for reducing traffic fatalities, and improving mode shift. I'm just going to drop the to just stop that. At, well, no, never mind. Uh, for to achieve the goals we have set for what again? Reducing traffic fatalities and achieving mode shift goals. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? I'll second. This Tim. All right. We uh, Commissioner Cordes moves. Commissioner Wee seconds. Uh, Commissioner Cordes to your motion. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so, you know, we've all worked very hard for years on both the Vision Zero plan and the active transportation plan. We realize that um, the Vision Zero plan has significant costs, and the estimates for the implementing the active transportation plan is somewhere between 20 and 100 million dollars. At our current rate of spending, it will take many decades for either of these plans to be achieved. And I think it's our responsibility to send a consistent message to the city council that this is unacceptable. People are dying, people are getting seriously injured. Uh, if you look in the Vision Zero plan, it says that the cost to society and the victims of people killed and injured in Sunnyvale between 2012 and 2014, every year was $28 million. That's $28 million per year in cost of impact from not having safe streets. And we need to make this message clear and consistent to the council that the current funding levels are not acceptable. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Cordes. Commissioner Weedy, your second. And I uh, concur with everything Commissioner Cordes uh, articulated. And that also is the basis for my question of seeing what the breakdown is of our funding level so I can understand how much you're spending on bikes and peds and motorized vehicles. But I, uh, I agree, we need to prioritize uh, money to complete ATP improvements and Vision Zero improvements. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Week. Uh, Vice Chair Melman. I would add that um, in, in addition to um, our, you know, the, the rationales 
previously presented for the funding, that um, implementation of our ATP and Vision Zero plan is also crucial to achieving our climate action plan goals, because without that modal, modal shift, with uh, cars being the largest percentage of the contributors to uh, air quality and pollution, um, that we are not going to achieve our additional reductions um, that we have uh, slated for 2050. So, um, you know, it's, it's put up or shut up time. <laughs> Thank you very much, Vice Chair Melman. Um, do we have any further comments or questions or discussion? If not, I will go. Um, um, yeah, I didn't get a chance to raise my hand, but I would like to oh, comment. Okay. But I can no, do Commissioner it after Haifman. you. No, 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 Commissioner Haifman, you go. I just want to say that I will support this motion. Um, just reading through and seeing all these traffic projects that are automobile traffic projects that's being done, at least an order of magnitude more money per project, if not more. And, and I think a lot more needs to be done on other modes of transportation. The automobile is somewhat of a dead end. We all know that when we look, consider climate and consider we're in our last decade of being able to make a change to prevent the worst societal outcome from climate change. Thank you very much, Commissioner Haifman. Um, I am of two minds on this motion. I intend to, I, I am going to be supporting this motion. I understand that there are very serious challenges and that we have an extremely constrained budget and actually coming up with $5 million per year on anything is going to be a tremendous challenge. That said, uh, and that, by the way, is why I've put forward a, a study issue for a bond measure to fund implementation of the active transportation plan and other forms of green infrastructure. Um, so I am skeptical the extent to which this is achievable. However, what everyone else has said is absolutely correct. We need to be focused on mode shift, we need to be focused on bringing down not just fatalities, but serious injury crashes. This needs to be a very high priority. We spend a tremendous amount of money every year on motor vehicle infrastructure. Um, so I think it is important to send the message that, you know, we need to be looking to actually build this out, to actually implement this. Um, I just want to set the expectations that this is not, go is not going to be easy to find that money. Um, even though we absolutely should. Uh, Commissioner Wee, is that a hand? That is a hand. As far as finding the money, I was hopeful that we could actually shift away from the motor vehicle spending to spend that money on bike and ped, which is a lot cheaper and actually save us money at the same time. Um, rather than actually having this all additive, we have to find extra money. I would really see the shift of monies. That's my own perspective. I would say that a this might make a great study issue on how we might actually accomplish such a shift of funding. Um, anyway, with that, if there is no, and I would encourage my colleagues to consider drafting such a study issue, hint, hint. Um, with that, seeing no further hands raised, uh, city staff, may we have the roll call vote, please. Uh, do you want me to read the motion again? Uh, no, I think it's fine. Uh, we have it down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Commissioner Swale? Aye. Vice Chair Melman? Aye. Commissioner Haveman? Aye. Commissioner Dave? Aye. Chair Mellinger? Aye. Commissioner Owe? Aye. Commissioner Cordes? Aye. The vote it was carried out by uh, seven yes and zero no. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Do we have any further motions pertaining to the budget? Um, city staff, would it be useful to put in a motion requesting that, uh, you know, ped, bike, motor vehicle breakdown for next year's budget? Or do you think that you know, that's, uh, it's sufficient just based on the discussion we've had. 
I think it would be beneficial to include a motion so that we can um, provide that information to um, the finance department. All right, then I will make the motion it's that we request for the, I believe next year's would be the 2022-2023 budget, correct? Correct. Uh, we request a rough breakdown <laughs> of funding uh, for transportation projects uh, broken down by the categories of pedestrian, uh, bicycle, or motor vehicle. And we request that for the 2022-2023 budget and all budgets going forward. Do I have a second? I second. Commissioner Dave seconds. Um, to my motion, I thought this was an excellent suggestion from Commissioner Wee. I think that this breakdown will be very helpful to the BPAC and to the city council in understanding just how and where we are spending our transportation dollars. Um, and Commissioner Dave, to your second. I agree. All right, Commissioner Cordes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've been looking at many city budgets and I agree they're all basically the same format as, as Sunnyvale's. One thing that Commissioner uh, Mailman, or excuse me, Vice Chair Mailman brought up that I would ask city uh, staff to investigate, if there's some way to identify in the existing database structure recurring expenses like the bicycle plan every X years so that we understand why those are funded so differently than other kinds of projects. Um, that'd be really helpful. And the other thing is that I realize for a lot of big projects, it's very hard to estimate uh, the percentage that's bicycle related, the percentage that's pedestrian related, and the percentage that's car related. Um, but I think for all the ones that are clearly focused on cars and pedestrians, or excuse me, pedestrians and bicycles, that would be one category, right? Bicycle only, pedestrian only, and then active transport, you know, combination of pedestrian and bicycle, and then mixed or something. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out a way we can clearly see what's focused on uh, implementing the active transportation plan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Cordes. Commissioner Wee. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much for making this motion. Um, I will be voting in support of it. And I've, this is just a really high level, easy way for us to take a perspective on where we're at. And so I, I would really look forward to this. And I trust staff will work out a reasonable way to do this without it being too onerous. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think it's just a rule of thumb approach um, for each project and they, they just add it up in a spreadsheet. So thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Vice Chair Melman. Yes, um, I would like to propose um, some specific, um, I guess, predeterminations or definitions um, with respect to this breakdown, that um, any repaving project or street resurfacing project or anything like that is automatically considered motor vehicle related, except if it is specifically um, to install a bike lane. I'm gonna decline the friendly amendment. I wanna leave staff leeway on this. Okay. If you'd like to make I, that I, as I a formal amendment. That, you know, the mixed thing is that, you know, where, so a lot of like street infrastructure things, you know, signals and stuff like that. What, what bucket are you going to put those in? Are you going to put those in under motor vehicle? Or are you going to put those under mixed? And, and then if there's a large percentage of mixed, how do you break down that down in terms of. As, uh, the motion does not call for a mixed category. The motion is bicycles, pedestrians, or motor vehicles. Um, it is the, it is asking for that breakdown. I, sure. Sure, yes, Mellon, sir. sorry to interrupt. I would have to tell you that you're going to, it's going to, as I mentioned earlier on, it's going to be very difficult to separate everything into a clearly defined buckets like that, because even traffic signals, traffic signals benefit buses, transit, pedestrians, bicyclists, and vehicles. I would say that they're a safety improvement and that they're necessary. If we're, there's going to be very, honestly, I was just sending a message to my staff. There's very little CIP projects that we do that benefits solely only vehicular traffic. When we repave roadways, that's a benefit right. towards bicyclists also and transit. Mm -hmm. And then it is. as along with the paving projects, we tend to do ADA curb ramps at the same time. So there's a benefit for, for pedestrians. 
So it's what you're going to get is, is a very large mix. Some of them are going to be solely, yes, we are going to be separating out saying these are pedestrian only projects where we're doing sidewalks or bike projects where we're doing trails. But then when you get to the vehicle projects, it's hard to differentiate. We're going to give it our, we're going to try and then we'll, we'll be honest about everything, but it is going to be a large mixed pot from my, from my experience. Fair enough. Understood. Thank you. Uh, now, Commissioner Melman, you do, of course, have the right to raise this as a formal amendment, which would then be voted on and discussed by the BPAC. Uh, no, thank you. I'll withdraw. All right. Thank you very much, Vice Chair Melman. Uh, Commissioner Haifman. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, listening to this discussion, the thing that I suggest, if the money is being spent to implement something in the ATP, that I think mm. is what we need broken out. Yeah. If the money is being spent on something maybe bicyclists benefit from, but is not implementing something in the ATP, then it's not included in this uh, funding breakout that we've been talking about. And I had a, I actually raised my hand for another comment. I really hope I don't, I, we don't need to have this as a amendment, but I really hope the city manager in his summary on the next project budget um, review in two years can point out what's being spent on ATP related stuff. Cause that's a major undertaking by the city. Thank you very much, Commissioner Haifman. You raise an excellent point. And what I would suggest, and I'm gonna ask leave of my second to amend my motion to define bicycle and pedestrian projects as those called out in either the active transportation plan, the roadway safety plan, or the vision zero plan. So if it's in one of those three, it counts for the for this purpose. Does that sort of help you, uh, Mr. Ng? It, it helps in the sense that it'll, it'll break down the grant applications that we do Mm -hmm. But then, like, as I was saying, when we do traffic signal upgrades, they are in the sense of being multimodal. So you're going to be ignoring a, a good segment of the projects that we do. And we try very hard to not be solely vehicular. And that's my encouragement to my staff and my direction to them. Mm -hmm. um, so just we're, we'll do what the what the committee, what the commission desires. But then I think if you do that, you're, you're getting a smaller snapshot of things. It may be a little skewed also. I think the way to do that would be to just say, these are the things that we are calling out from these three specific plans that are specifically oriented towards bicycle and pedestrian safety, but it's not the only things we're doing for bike pet safety. Yes. I think that like with some sufficient, you know, with some sufficient explanation, you can convey what you just told us in the document alongside whatever table or summary you provide. And, and then just it, the more granular we get to, then the more work it is for staff. So there is a, there is that trade off that we're doing right, right here. Right. So and I think that just, right. So I, I just ask that the committee be cognizant of that. And then mm -hmm. um, it's not, and then to my point is that it's it's not going to be our finance group that's going to be doing this. We're going to have my staff and I are going to have to make the interpretation and then we're going to have to we'll go through each project and then identify that for for the commission next next discussion when we go through this again in next May. OK, Commissioner, we do you accept my own friendly amendment to my motion that we're limiting it to those three plans? I think. Uh, uh, um... Vice oh, Chair Melman, Commissioner Deve, uh, Deve. someone else seconded, not Commissioner me. Commissioner Devay seconded, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so ask me your question again, please. Do you accept my proposed friendly amendment to my motion that we're gonna define, you know, we're asking for things, you know, the things that are listed on either the ATP, the Vision Zero Plan or the Roadway Safety Plan? I agree. Okay. Um, so the motion then is to have a, a chart sort of listing down a rough, uh, listing a rough breakdown of 
you know, this is how much money we're spending on bike ped infrastructure listed in those three plans. Great. Do we have, uh, I am hoping that by limiting it to the things that are explicitly in those three plans that will also limit the amount of work that this will require from staff because it should be relatively straightforward to say this is in plan A. Um, and with that, do we have any further discussion? Commissioner Deve. Uh, one of you said that you compared the way this budget is presented to other budgets of other cities. And I was just um, going to ask if those other cities broke out their bicycle and pedestrian spending at all. Is that question aimed at me, Commissioner Dave? If you were the person that, um, yeah. yes. No, I asked if the output was a standardized uh, format or, or if it was dictated by some regulatory compliance thing. And then um, um, Mr. Ng commented that it was a standard format used by most cities uh, based on the financial, I guess, software or application that's used by the cities. Is that about right, Mr. Ning? Yes, and then I think that Commissioner Cortez may may have a little bit of insight because I've had discussions with him in the past in another job where he <laughs> he broached information similar to what Commissioner Davey's mentioned. <laughs> um, so it varies tremendously by city. Um, for example, in Mountain View, um, they just have a standing item in their budget that says 50K a year for bicycle improvements, but it shows up every year and they forecast it all the way out. And then you have to go dive into the capital projects. So there are different ways of accounting for it. At some point, that money then will move from a kind of a storage account, which is this money they accumulate for bike and pred safety projects, for example, into actual on the ground projects. So the, there is quite a bit of variety in how cities do it. And again, it depends on the size of the project. You know, um, Mr. Ng and I were talking this, earlier this morning about how they did a safe route to school project to remove the pork chop at the corner of Indio and Matilda. And at the same time, they put in a buffer bike lane there. So that was actually classified as a safe route to school project, not a bicycle improvement project. Does that answer your question too? Thank you, that very much helps. So uh, we can see a system that's working and what percentage is going to their improvements and perhaps bring them back to our city. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. If there is no further comment, discussion or debate, going once, going twice, city staff, may we have the roll call vote, please. Commissioner Darve. Aye. Commissioner Swale. Aye. Commissioner Haifman? I think Commissioner Haifman may have dropped. Oh, there he is. Sorry, I'm finally back. Yes, I did drop momentarily. Aye. Um, Chair Mallinger? Aye. Commissioner Cordes? Aye. Vice Chair Melman? Aye. Commissioner Oe? Aye. Um, the vote was carried out by seven yes and zero no. All right. Thank you very much. Do we have any further motions on the budget? Seeing and hearing none, if there is no further discussion on the budget, I'm going to move on to agenda item three, file number 21-0585, report and discussion of recent Santa Clara Valley Transportation Authority Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, do we have a staff report or a report from our liaison? Well, uh, from the liaison, who is me, yes, I have a report that was included. Uh, this particular meeting had a lot of meaty content. It was very uh, fulfilling, but it was also very quick, which was nice. Um, three significant items. Um, one, there's a recommended, um, recommendation of the VTA Board of Directors to approve the recommended project list for 2016 Measure B Bicycle and Pedestrian Planning Studies Competitive Grant Program. And um, I included in here the attachment that shows the uh, five winners, including the East Channel Trail Study for Sunnyvale. So congratulations to staff and uh, that scored very well. Looking forward to that East Channel Trail uh, progressing forward. 
And then you can see the other um, plans here as well from, that are happening elsewhere in the county. Um, third, second item, um, the recommendation to the VT Board of Directors to adopt the Bicycle Super Highway Implementation Plan. Um, the BPAC also approved the staff recommendation here. And there is a, a picture of a big map that you can see of all of the corridors, some of which are done, some of which are in, they're very, in a variety of different states. Um, yeah, there's uh, generally meets the super high definition now. There's an alignment established and these have to do some improvements to it. And then there's on um, the dotted lines require, require further study to determine feasibility of those specific alignments. I think uh, the all of the BPAC committee members were in agreement that um, having just a big grid view and have a future plan to connect the entire county was a great direction uh, for us um, to be shooting for. And there uh, there's a couple other um, slides with the proposed corridors and with the goal of uh, reducing weekday vehicle miles traveled, um, reducing that. And they actually they had a model showing the reduction as well, which was nice to see. Um, the third item was a review of the Complete Streets checklist for projects submitted for the Quick Strike program. And I apologize, I included the wrong slide. I was late in the evening or something, I was putting this together. Um, so there's a replacement slide for the one I have as, um, so it should be um, page six, but it should be page five I should have included, which just had the summary. The bolded items were the ones that were selected for the Quick Strike program. So our two Sunnyvale ones were not um, accepted by MPC. So MPC made the decision and they selected the bolded ones on the amendment that Lillian I'm saying uh, sent out um, just this morning, I believe, when I discovered that the error of what I included in the, my uh, handout. So if there are any questions, um, that's it for my report. I'm trying to make it very quick. Um, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. All right, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Wee, and thank you again for your diligence on uh, with the county VTA, uh, VTA BPAC. Um, do we have any, well, first off, I'm gonna open the public hearing now. Any members of the public wishing to give comment on this item, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom or dial star nine on your telephone. City staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to give comment on this item? Um, we do not see any raised hands um, in the public. All right, going once, going twice. I'm gonna close the public comment and bring it back to the commission. Uh, commissioners, do we have any comments or questions for Commissioner Wee? Uh, Commissioner Dave. Good, you can see me. Uh, so uh, can you say that again about the ones that were not selected? Um, what is that was on the, the, the ones that are not bolded are not selected. Yes, this was for the quick strike application. So MTC evaluated the projects and the ones that were not bolded did not make their criteria. However, they came up with their criteria. So they're still on the plate for, for future consideration. They can be resubmitted, um, but they did not make this round. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Wee, Commissioner Dave. Do you have any further questions for Commissioner Wee? No, I don't. Okay, going once, going twice. Uh, all right, so we are done with this agenda item. Next up, we have file 21-0596, agenda item number four, uh, potential study issue, roll in or fully enclosed bike parking ordinance. Uh, do we have a staff report or do we have comments from the maker, uh, the proposer of the study issue? Commissioner Weo, do you want to um, discuss or present your proposed study issue? Okay. Um, so um, I'll talk to it briefly. Mm -hmm. So I myself have rolled my bicycle in and noticed that it would be nice for the city to have some mechanism for encouraging this behavior, because uh, it is very doable in a lot of different businesses. I am not certain how best to capture this or how what form the ordinance would take. It actually is related somewhat to one of our prior study issues regarding how we handle um, micromobility parking and um, charging. So I'm open to having this sort of mushed together with that particular proposal if it works. But basically, um, if you can have, um, if you can roll the, the your item your device into the business, you don't need the parking outside. 
But if you cannot roll it into the business, then you do need secure parking for our devices, our um, bicycles and micro mobility um, vehicles. Um, and ideally those would be uh, bike lockers because different pieces get taken from these devices. And then um, we could also have charging inside of them as was pointed out in the other uh, um, study issue that uh, Chair Mellinger, I believe, uh, was the author of. Um, so I'm interested in hearing what uh, staff thinks of these uh, this potential study issue. Um, I did point out that this, uh, San Francisco and New York both have ordinances in place for existing buildings to encourage um, owner property owners to allow bikes inside or provide secure parking. So this other cities have um, done some ordinances in this direction. Uh, I'm not sure what best fits for Sunnyvale, but I'd like to have it studied to see what the options are for us. Um, so in terms of staff comments, um, so this is the following are the staff comments. The city requires bike storage and parking outside retail and commercial space and generally does not regulate the use of interior retail, commercial or office space. Secure bike parking is already required on most office developments for employees. The, in, um, the retail market in particular is changing and it might be difficult for retail tenants to use portions of their business for the access to and maintenance control of the storage of public bicycle and other types of alternative transportation. Yeah, what, one comment about that is when the bicycle rolls inside, it's not parked in the traditional sense. So there's actually no change that the business owner necessarily needs to make to the facility other than just to recognize that, yes, bicycles, as long as they're managed in a respectful fashion, they don't crash into things and they don't, um, they're not obstructing other people's use. Like I use my bicycle like my shopping cart. And if they have a particular protocol for handling the bicycle, the supermarkets are an easy case. They have a lot of space, wide aisles, so the shopping carts can move down and my bicycle about the same size. So I'm hoping that it's not something that we have to um, require new storage inside for public, for bicycles, but accommodation. And this would include actually city buildings. We've now all, well, pre-COVID, we're all, we're in the habit um, of, I'm happy to say, of our commissioners riding to uh, our meetings. And I think part of that was we started bringing our bicycles inside and that just made it more comfortable to have our bicycles within view. And there was plenty of space for them. In that case, they were actually parked, but bringing them into the chambers or into the um, amphitheater, the, uh, that other area outside of our chambers where we met. Um, when we started doing that, it made it much easier for all of us to bike to the meeting rather than drive to the meeting. And it's that change in approach. Uh, and I'd like to see actually that also in our city um, buildings. Um, some buildings might not work like the library where you're sitting for a long time, having your bike parked to it uses up a lot of space, bike lockers are better there. But when I go to pick up a permit, rather than having the person at the desk say, oh, bikes aren't allowed, I'm just rolling in, getting the permit and rolling back out again. It's a lot of effort to have to lock the bike and take all the pieces off just for a one or two minute transaction just to pick something up and then depart. Um, and this all encourages bicycling. So this is all part of my thinking behind this um, the study. And let me know if I need to add more detail to this, but that, that's some of my thoughts I'm hoping the staff could work with. Thank you very much, Commissioner Wee, Vice Chair Melman. Sorry, I had to unmute. So um, I have a couple concern uh, or one observation and, and, and a concern. So my observation is, is that um, what I think Commissioner Wee is asking for is not parking so much as the ability to bring a bicycle within a building if the uh, if the building if if the building accommodates so so that you know you're not chased out of the building kind of thing with your bicycle rather than actually parking it because I think parking a bicycle in a building would involve issues with respect to um, you know the fire marshal and exit exits and egresses and that kind of thing. Um, which is what my concern would be. So maybe what the phrasing is, is, is not parking, is that um, that unless otherwise specified that um, bicyclists be permitted to bring their vehicles uh, and alternative to bring their vehicles into a building so long as that building can safely accommodate uh, entrance and eager, uh, and, um, entry and exit of the uh, bicycle or scooter or whatever in question kind of thing. Um, I don't know about the parking part of it because that, like I said, that, that brings up other issues. So 
It, it is related, actually, um, because if they cannot bring it in, then they do need a place to park. But right. this would provide some businesses a way to say, hey, we don't have to provide that exterior parking because we're actually allowing the bikes in with the customers. Right. So that actually alleviates their need to actually build any additional parking. So um, trying to figure out how to do that, that mix properly. And that's why it's a study issue to figure out. Yeah. I, I don't have the solution. Yeah. I'm looking for, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I guess alternatives to exterior bike parking might be yes. the catch-all category then, uh, or uh, covered bike parking, which provides uh, electrical charge or something, you know, like yes. if it was a solar-powered bike locker or whatever. <laughs> but that's my only comment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vice Chair Melman, Commissioner Deve. Sorry, I'm ignorant of this. Um, you're bringing up a, an idea that may need refinement. Is the purpose of this meeting to hash out the details to refine it, or is it a yes or no question? Please educate me. It's to define bounds so that staff knows what they're looking into or for the study issue. So we're, we're having to debate the study issue. See, do we need to refine it further, the idea that we're submitting um, for staff to study and be more specific about what we're asking so they know what to, to do so we have a few options here. One is to essentially accept the study issue as written. The second is to propose essentially minor modifications to the scope of the study issue uh, that could be adopted here in the meeting. The third would be to ask Commissioner Wee to go and make some changes and bring it back at a future time. And we could task another up to two other commissioners to help him with that uh, without violating the Brown Act. So that is essential. Or we could just say, absolutely not. So those are sort of the four choices that we have. I had a is question that... for Chair Mellinger. Um, yes, do you feel that this fits well with your um, micromobility parking and like, you know, charging one, or do you want to keep okay. that separate? I think I want to keep mine separate because mine is focused on a fairly unique infrastructure requirement. And it is also focused for day storage, mm -hmm. right? This is not focused on, you know, your, yours is focused primarily on retail. So quick trips, where do you store it? What do you do with it? You know, while you're running your errand, mine is focused on safe storage during the day or overnight while you're in your office or your home. Well, there is a little overlap. Um, some of the offices I've worked in have allowed me to roll my bike into my cube and they didn't need bike parking then for the day, because I just was in my cube, I could charge it if I needed to, because I just plug it into my outlet socket in my Remem office. But remember the fire safety issue. Mm -hmm. That was sort of the, that yeah, well, was sort of the reason, the impetus for the other one. So I that's true. don't think I would like to see this rolled in with the other study issue, unless staff thinks it would be a good idea to do so. Well, just to add in um, my perspective as a staff person for this, is that for office buildings, it's, something that the city doesn't regulate. It's the actual businesses or the property owner of the building. We would mandate that, say, Google uh, still provide a storage locker, storage room for micro mobility devices and charging. But then if they allow you to roll your, your bicycle and store it in your cubicle or where your workspace is, that's, up, that's completely up to the company or the building building tenant at that point. Would it be an option to have them um, not have to have as much bicycle parking if they did allow people to basically use that as a bicycle parking? Is it an alternative for bike parking to satisfy the bike it's, parking requirements? The problem is that usually when we review and entitle office buildings, they're done per spec. So they're not done with a, a single tenant in mind already that's mm -hmm. identified. So we work with a developer. They designed this building, it's an empty shell, we tell them, okay, for this amount of square footage, you're going to need this. And then they build the building at that point, and they look for a tenant. So there's no guarantee that the same tenant is going to be there all the time. At any rate, there, there are two other cities, at least San Francisco, New York City, that did have um, ordinances that encourage people to allow bicycles inside when, um, when it was a good option. So Sure, I understood. Yeah. Tim, was that more or less permitting bicycles inside um, without having a citation issued for bringing your bicycle inside? Or It was actually encouraging businesses to allow bicycles inside. 
So it, it sounds because I'm I'm I keep thinking about your proposed study, and I think it's kind of nebulous as to what the um, staff needs to focus on. Are we going to focus on like an education and outreach um, to permit? retail spaces and office spaces to allow bicycles inside or are you asking i mean because i'm trying i understand the problem is is bike safe bike parking but i'm i'm kind of missing what the focus of the solution should be. The, the focus is to figure out how to articulate an ordinance that would apply to sunnyvale that would cause that encouragement to happen but with some city ordinance of some sort whether it be copied from san francisco new york city or we craft our own so it's an actual ordinance. Yes. Okay. Cha or change so to ordinance existing ordinances. Is encouraging. But it, it, I mean, an ordinance usually specifies that it's permitted or not permitted, right? So mm -hmm. uh, an ordinance that encourages is just kind of um, confusing to me in terms of how it's expressed. Because that still implies like an element of decision. You can look at those links and see what other cities have done. Okay. I didn't call out specifically how they did it. I was letting staff figure out what would work best for us. Fair enough. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chair Melman. Commissioner Haifman has not spoken yet, I believe, and then we will do Commissioner Dave. Hey, thank you, Chair. Um, it seems to me for, for this to work, we would need an ordinance that requires businesses, and I'm thinking retail now, not workplaces per se, to provide safe parking for bicycles. Mm -hmm. Then if they provide safe parking for bicycles, a way of accomplishing some of that is to allow, is if they allow bicycles to be brought into the place of business. Exactly. The roll in, roll out. But if you don't have a requirement for bicycle parking more than what we have today, then I don't know if it makes sense. So it seems like maybe the study issue has to include a study of a, a much more stringent bicycle parking requirement on businesses. Yeah, that is actually mentioned in the title, fully enclosed bike parking, or you can bring it inside. Okay, yes, I saw that, but I don't think it's emphasized properly. Maybe uh, in, the, in the text, I hope it is. Maybe in my description, I didn't talk as much toward it. Yeah, because what what is going to be that additional parking requirement? How many slots? How is it based on square footage of the building? And how is it different than what we're going to have today? Now, I realize you're not implementing the study issue, so but maybe it needs to be a little clear what staff is supposed to study here. Well, that is actually what staff is supposed to, what you just articulated, they have to figure out what makes sense for us to capture an ordinance to achieve this end. That is the purpose of study issue. Okay, but I think with the, with, I right, part of this would have to be a dramatic or a somewhat increase and parking facilities at each business. Yes, to get secure parking facilities so that pieces aren't don't disappear from whatever you're parking, assuming you can't bring it inside with you, because then you can make sure because it's with you and then pieces don't disappear or the whole device gets stolen. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much, Commissioner Haithman. Commissioner Deve, then I will go. Um. I was trying to read the text of the um, analogous bills from SF and New York. And uh, the ones that I was able to access uh, appear to apply to elevator usage. And that's, bit, you know, I was thinking, well, what if, what's the wording that's analogous to what you're talking about, which is being able to roll it around the store and perhaps use it as a shopping cart. I think that's one mm -hmm. of what you'd like to encourage. Um, and so I, I was thinking, you know, they, if they passed already, they would have wording that would be easy to transfer over. But I could, did you actually see something like that? Well, this is as close as I could get because elevators are very constrained space-wise. 
that's an extreme example. They said, okay, no, you have to allow the bicycle into that very confined space. Um, this is as close as I could find to ordinances in this particular space. So again, I, again, I defer to staff to figure out, yeah, as part of the study issue, does this work for Sunnyvale? Is there an option for us? Or, how, or maybe they could actually come back and say, you know, it doesn't make sense for an ordinance, but we actually having an incursion program, like having paying for bike parking racks, that's actually a better option um, to enable this behavior. Uh, yep, yeah, I don't know. At, at least we could change city policy or at least uh, the perception of city policy because I have rolled my bike inside and some city staffers didn't have an issue with it. But when I was picking up a key at the community center, they said, no, you've got to park your bike outside. And it's like, whoa, why? <laughs> Lots of space, roll it in, grab the key, leave. Um, all right, so I'm gonna say that I feel like this study issue needs a bit more refinement uh, before I would be ready to vote in favor of it. Um, what I'm going to suggest is that Commissioner Wee uh, and then up to two other commissioners go back sort of see if they can tighten this and make it a little more clear sort of what exact, you know, uh, it, it sounds it sounds like you're going in the right direction, but sort of tighten this up a bit, make it really clear, really crisp, what it is this study issue is gonna be asking for and looking at, maybe uh, work with Ms. Tsang or Mr. Ng, uh, like you could possibly do a working session with them if they've got time to go over it and answer any questions and bring this back next month or the month after would be my suggestion. Do, and uh, that, that would be my thought. Commissioner Wee, what do you think of that? Um. I'm not sure how much more, are we, are, let's see. I didn't read actually verbally all the texts in, I thought, I thought that actually the texts I put bounded it reasonably well um, to either have a secure facility or allow bikes inside one or the other and which in calls, you know, in making our bike parking more stringent um, to make sure we have secure bike parking, not just a rack outside. It, it, it's like actually um, having cars always have their doors open after they park <laughs> yes the just the justification yeah. is clear it's yeah. you know so you mentioned for instance secure interior parking within 750 feet but yeah. it doesn't say how many spaces you know well obviously well, staff no, is supposed to figure that this out yeah i can't determine and say this is what is required of it i'm setting the bounds of what the objective is and then hoping they will come up with a recommended ordinance that fits our needs for Sunnyvale. I'm not sure how much more I could add to this um, to make it more specific. Okay, uh, Commissioner Cordes. Thank you, Chair. I'm wondering if both from a staff perspective and from Mr. Weiss perspective, Commissioner Weiss, excuse me, if it could be, because um, staff's responding that you can't, there's limitations on what you can require as far as uh, bicycle storage inside a building, but we intent seems to be not bicycle storage, but walking around with your bicycle while you shop. Well, so I'm wondering if that staff thinks that's more uh, acceptable. Well, there are two pieces of it. One is have a certain amount of bicycle storage that's secure but be able to satisfy that by saying, oh, we don't actually need that because we satisfy because we allow the customer actually inside with their bike. So we don't need to actually pay for those extra spaces. Those are the, sort of the two alternatives. One, if you can't allow it inside, then you have to have that secure storage. If you do allow it inside, then you are alleviated from having to have maybe as much. I mean, there still should be some secure storage for people who don't want to walk around with their bike inside. Um, so, okay, okay. sorry. Thank you. So there is one actual problem with this that I just realized, Commissioner Wee, mm -hmm. um, which is that the bike storage is a land use regulation, mm -hmm. right? And so land use regulations um, 
attached to the building, mm -hmm. okay? Not to the business that occupies the building. So if a business under your scheme wants to do this, wants to alleviate their bike parking requirements by allowing, you know, roll in, then that would actually have to be a condition of approval on the building that all future inhabitants of the building must allow bikes to be rolled in. Or if they can't be, they add the parking necessary to accommodate those bikes, one or the other. But adding parking once construction of the building is complete is challenging and this starts to get very difficult to enforce and, and i don't have a i'm already again kind of dipping into the reason for the study is okay so how do we figure that out or i don't want to have to figure it out myself ahead of the study and come up with a solution or unless our yeah how do we i don't know how to capture that but these are the the balancing objectives that i saw um that could mitigate um, we don't require all businesses to allow to force them to allow all bikes inside, but we have an accommodation. The cyclist has a problem regardless. They have to keep their bikes safe. So how do they do that? And how do we articulate that? So we make it convenient and also convenient. Um, this certainly makes it, if the bike can roll inside and that's enforced or encouraged through some mechanism, um, that makes bicycles way more attractive than motor vehicles because then you can actually get in and out of a business much more quickly and encourages people to bike. Um, right now, locking a bike takes way more time than just shutting the, slamming the door cut closed on a car because you have your security cage with you all the time. Um. All right. Uh, Commissioner Cordes, did you have something to add? Sorry, got to put my hand down. All right. Well, at this point, if we don't have any further discussion on this, I'd be ready to entertain a motion. Well, I'd like to move that we um, up, approve this as a, a potential study issue at this point and put it onto our working list as is. Um, I, I didn't really hear anything concrete that I could add to it that would help staff further other than our general discussion we've had just now. All right, is there a second for Commissioner Wee's motion? I'll second the motion. Thank you very much, Commissioner Cordes. Um, if you have anything to add to your motion, Commissioner Wee. Let's see, so to speak to my motion, I know this is, um, there's a challenge uh, as uh, Chair Mellinger articulated in how we capture this. Um, yet it's a very, uh, let's see, I have found it very successful in persuading businesses to accommodate me. I'd like to make it easier for other people to recognize this as an easy alternative for them and basically change our culture um, in our area to allow this to happen more easily. And either they have a secure place to park their bike outside or they're able to roll it inside, keep it securely with them. Uh, so that's the, that's, I am I'm very much in support of having staff investigate how to turn this into ordinance or into a program that um, make, it changes, it helps change our culture and allowing this to happen in Sunnyvale. All right. Do we have any further discussion or debate on the motion? Um, I will be voting to support the motion on the basis of we will have the opportunity to groom our study issues list in September or October. Um, I've still got some concerns about the land use aspect of this, but I think it's worth putting it on the list. So, Commissioner Cordes. I second in the motion. I'm going to be supporting it. I've been reviewing the San Francisco documents. It seems like it's a fairly easily to implement commercial property ordinance. Um, it's working up there and hopefully it will work in Sunnyvale. Thank you very much, Commissioner Cordes. All right, if we've got no further discussion or debate, city staff, may we have the roll call vote, please. Um, Commissioner Cordes. Aye. Commissioner Haifman. Aye. Commissioner Dave. Aye. 
Chair Mellinger? Aye. Commissioner Swell? Aye. Vice Chair Melman? I'm going to abstain because I just feel that uh, it needs a little bit more refinement. So I can't, I can't in good uh, conscience throw my uh, own. Point of order. This is a roll call vote, uh, oh, okay. Commissioner Melman. Right. Vice Chair Melman. Uh, so I have to say I or not I or that no a, you could it's abst I abstain. abstain or abstain. nay but not discussion oh sorry abstain okay Commissioner Oe aye the motion was carried out by six yes and one abstain all right thank you very much next on the agenda uh, is we move on chair yes sir before, I'd like to ask staff a question so. I'm really unclear kind of what the process is if we're going to try and clean up this study issue any further. Um, could Commissioner Wee submit more data or just more input to you? How would he try and clean this up, uh, you know, so that it's hopefully more the uh, commissioners find it more acceptable when we have to vote on this in the fall? Um, so if Commissioner uh, Owe were to submit additional information. I don't know if that's going to um, ch change because what we're voting for today is what you know it was addressed in this um, in this scope. Um, and I think if any refinement would be really um, when staff develop the actual study issue paper um, that would help us draft that paper. All right, thank you for that clarification. Uh, I guess is one option for him to submit a, another study issue as a, a substitute or a replacement for this one, if he wants to draft it up again with more detail? He could do that, right? Craft, draft effectively a replacement study issue request? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And Commissioner Haifman, you also have your hand raised. Did you have questions on this? Sorry, I forgot to lower. All right, thank you, Commissioner Wee. I do have a question for staff. Um, so when you um, work on the study issue more, can we have a dialogue at that time as it was refined further? Um, yes, I think we could um, do that. And then also the study issue, will we will probably um, involve um, the um, city um, departments of um, community development to, um, to, to draft the study issue paper. Okay, well. thank you. I think that would be helpful actually to do a joint. So it's, it's, I'm not tossing something over the wall and then you're, you're working on it disconnected from other thoughts I have in the space. So we can work toward a, a mutually agreeable solution. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Commissioner Wee. Seeing no further discussion or debate on this item, moving on to file 210589, uh, 2022 proposed study issues. This is a placeholder item. Um, however, I wanted to raise something that was, we have discussed, I believe, at the previous meeting, which is, would it be possible to include our deferred study issues on the list of study issues in the packet uh, currently under this item? I have included it in the info only. Uh, I'm looking. It's oh, info it's, only three. Oh, so it's not with this year's study. Oh, I see. Okay, I did not realize that. Uh, city staff, I appreciate you doing that. However, it would be helpful if next time we could put them with the 2022 study issues um, so that they're all in one place. Um. Is so that the, possible? the challenge is that um, this is a study, you know, this is a standing item where um, it supposedly include all the proposed study issue that will be um, that we will be bringing back to vote to, um, you know, for sponsorship in September. Whereas the defer Jesus. list, let's see, some of them. Um, so the defer list, um, depending on whether it was deferred by the BPAC or the city council, it will be um you know if it was if it was brief, um for, for example there is one that was ranked by city council but it was bef below the line so that one will be brought back no matter you know what no matter what response yeah mm -hmm. okay um well i'm fine with it now that we know where to look for it i'm fine with this okay 
Um, I don't believe there are any further items on the, wait, did I open public hearing on Commissioner Wee's study issue? I think you did. Mm -hmm. I think that happened at the beginning. Yeah, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Technically I have to open the public hearing on this uh, study issue on this agenda item as well. Uh, members of the public wishing to comment on this agenda item, please use the raise hand feature or dial star nine on your telephone. Uh, seeing no members of the public wishing to give comment on this agenda item, I'm going to close the public hearing. Um, we are now, and do we um, have I any do further to... uh, discussion on this? Oh, sorry. I do want to mention that um, um, Commissioner Owe also submitted another study issue paper, which we will be um, include. We will include that for um, next month's agenda. Thank you. I appreciate that update. All right. Um, do we have any further discussion or debate on uh, this item? Nothing to debate, really. Seeing and hearing none, we're gonna move on to non-agenda items and comments. We'll begin with commissioner comments. Uh, any commissioners, uh, Commissioner Wee? It's here, it's bike month. It's a bike tour every day. <laughs> I hope, how many of you, raise your hand, are, have pledged to ride? <laughs> okay, get with the program, guys. If you're on the Bike Ped Commission, <laughs> I'll get you out there riding. Go to bikesiliconvalley.org slash BTWD for Bike to Wherever Day. Um, we had a Bike to Cookie Day earlier this month, um, which was very well received. Um, we also have, um, so bike tomorrow you can get your bag for uh, riding your bike to an Energizer station. Um, Sunnyvale has several Energizer stations. Uh, lay, um, Commissioner Mel, uh, Vice Chairman Melman is running one near uh, Caltrain, as a little pop-up. Um, we have a couple popping up um, on the uh, on Borregas and John Christian Greenbelt. Um, we have the Sunnyvale Farmers Market. We got the Sunnyvale Library, so you can just ride by and pick up a bag at these locations. Um, but you do need to pledge to ride and get your little uh, bag ticket that you'll get emailed once you pledge to ride, and then you can go pick up your bag. Um, and there are lots of energy stations in Mountain View, um, Mountain View City staff in particular. Where we, there's lots of them just right next door in Santa Clara also in Cupertino, any direction you go, they're energy stations. So um, get on your bike and get out and ride. Uh, just to mention also the bike party has come back as of uh, Friday evening. So um, you can go do a uh, go party at night. And then they're actually, Southern Valley Bicycle Coalition is also having a beer bash uh, June 4th, just after bike month is over that you can celebrate at as well. So um, party hardy, have a good time, get out there and bike, inspire others, be the change you want to see in the world. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Commissioner Wee. Commissioner Cordes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I also want to plug the fact that the Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition is hosting a free bicycle, virtual bicycle ride of the Bicycle Superhighway that VTA plans to develop in the 2018 Bicycle Master Plan. I believe it will be coming up on our city agenda as well uh, for the BPAC. Um, it's coming up and it's going to the Santa Clara BPAC at their uh, next city council meeting, but it's June 3rd at lunchtime. So if you, you should have gotten an invitation, if not, you can let me know and I'll make sure you get one. Um, but June 3rd at lunchtime will be a virtual tour of the 17 different alternatives that um, 17 different locations where VTA is studying to hopefully create uh, bicycle superhighways going forward. The first one, the Central Bikeway, is already under study, and the final route will be chosen this summer. It will go from East San Jose somehow and another around San Jose Airport through Santa Clara and end at the Sunnyvale Santa Clara border. So that will be the first official uh, superhighway uh, route designation. Unfortunately, just like everybody else, these uh, designations don't include the funding. So hopefully once it's designated as a bicycle superhighway route, then VTA and the cities involved will have an opportunity to apply for uh, grants and choose to prioritize implementation of the bicycle superhighway central bikeway project. Thank you. Uh, also next Tuesday night, the 25th from six to seven, the uh, Bicycle Coalition is sponsoring a free 
uh, bicycle 101 class. So if you know of anybody that wants to learn the basics, if, you know, wants to learn how to ride, it'll be a virtual class. It'll be going, covering on the basics of what you need to learn how to ride a bike. And you can find that at our website at www.bikesiliconvalley.org slash events. And on the, uh, Tuesday, the 25th, you'll see a free bicycle class, bicycle 101 class. That's all I have today. Thank you, Commissioner Cordes. Um, so I have a few questions for staff. Um, so a few things here. First, do we have an update on when we should be expecting to be returning to council chambers? Since I know Governor Newsom has said that most indoor restrictions are going to be lifted on June 15th, are we, uh, I'm fine continuing Zoom meetings for this indefinitely, but uh, if we, if there is a plan for us to be returning to chambers soon, um, it'd be helpful to know. Um, there, city staff has started discussions, uh, but then there isn't an, an exact date that's been identified yet. Uh, we mm -hmm. realize that the county's moved into the yellow tier, and then as of June 15th, um, Governor Newsom will be, I'll say, significantly relaxing um, a lot of the conditions. Uh, but uh, the city manager is still working on on a lot of logistics and considerations and making plans for the eventual reopening of City Hall and also for um, council meetings and all other public meetings. And I guess the wrinkle to this is, do we actually have a City Hall at the moment? Um, uh, we still do. City Hall is fine. Uh, the, you just have to enter in from the All America side. The Olive side Got is it. closed. Um, okay. Before, before you move on, uh, this might be a little out of order or strange, but no, no. Um, I don't know if um, either Commissioner Oe or Commissioner Cortez might want to introduce the member of the public that's sitting out there right now. If, if you want to, we could promote, I think uh, Lillian could promote her so she could turn on her video and, and talk also. <laughs> uh, certainly. Um... I would appreciate that, Mr. Ng, if you would allow our, our new person to introduce herself. Here she goes. <laughs> uh, welcome, Ms. Krumedy. Oh, you're still, you there, you there you go. Thanks, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what, let me cut the lighting up a little bit. Sorry for springing that on you. Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> quite all right. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening. <laughs> oh, oh, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, so my name is Diana Cremedy. I am the new Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition Santa Clara County Advocate. Um, I will be taking the place for John. Um, as you know, he's going to be retiring this month. And I'm just um, tuning in, trying to get a chance to meet people behind the scenes. The cover was blown. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little bit about my uh, my background, I guess. Um, uh, my background is in planning. Uh, I have a master's in urban and regional planning with the concentration in community development. Uh, but my passion is community engagement. Um, I have about 10 years of community organizing. So I'm just really excited about this position and being able to bring the community into the planning process and help, it, help them find it a, a little easier to access and simplify it so it doesn't seem like something that isn't for the, the people. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I am certain that the entire commission will be looking forward to working with you, Ms. Krumedy, and exciting to, uh, exciting to see you stepping into the role. Uh, John is certainly leaving some uh, large shoes to fill, um, and congratulations as well to uh, John on his retirement. All right. Well, thank you very much again. Uh, really appreciate it. Pleasure to meet you all. That was Pleasure fun. meeting you as well. Thank you. <laughs> Let me go back into the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. Thank oh, you. a happy birthday as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I went out for a quick birthday uh, dinner and we ended up early. So I was like, oh, I can get back in. <laughs> I can attend. So I'm here. <laughs> Wonderful. 
<laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Thank Pleasure you. to meet you. Nice meeting you all. All right. Um, so I do have a few more questions for uh, city staff. Um, would it be possible to ask the city clerk if we could get uh, unique file names on agendas? And the reason for that is I have roughly 37 files in my downloads folder named agenda. Um, if we could get something like BPAC, May 20, 2021 agenda, you know, and this, you know, this is true of all our posted agendas, I think. Um, city council downloads as agenda, planning downloads just as agenda. Would it be possible to convey that ask to the city clerk? We can check with um, the city clerk's office on that. Awesome. Thank you. And I do have one more thing I wanted to ask about. Um, and this is unfortunately a bit more substantive and a bit more uh, uh, serious question. As I think most of us know, there was a fight, fatal crash on Boragas uh, a week or two ago, where one of the uh, where an unhoused member of our community was struck and killed by a car in the wee hours of the morning. Uh, this is the second major crash at Boragas and Maud in the past year. There was a uh, last June, I believe, a drunk driver plowed into a house at the corner of uh, essentially Boragas and Maud, Boragas and Murphy. Um, there have been numerous complaints from members of the Snail Neighborhood Association about the state of traffic safety on Boragas. Um, the city staff, are there any plans in, given the these multiple accidents, are there any plans in work at the moment, any action being considered for uh, remediating Boragas? What, what steps are, any steps being considered on this? So um, I can't really say too much about this incident that happened. Uh, it's still under investigation. Of course. I can tell you that I, I do know some details to it and it may be um, both parties are have some fault in there. Um, and then that's still being investigated a bit. So it's not, um, it may not be as simple as something that we could engineer or enforce out of uh, to prevent this, this specific instance that happened on May 5th. Mm -hmm. So um, I think as once the, once the investigation is completed and DPS has come up with a resolution and an outcome for it, we could probably um, talk about uh, what what could be done in the future and then what what types of how we could tie this in with our education and encouragement campaign that we'll be undertaking later on this year or next year or it can even be brought into as a discussion next time uh, the lieutenant comes in and gives an update on crashes i could ask him to specific, specifically to talk about this incident but uh, from what i'm hearing right now it's it's I think both parties may have been at fault um, and it may not have been truly prevent it, it. It would have been something difficult to prevent. All right, well, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Ng. I appreciate your, I appreciate your candor on that. And then, um, um, but I, um, just to answer your question, we don't, we don't have any other um, campaigns or improvements identified for Boragas at this point where um, what we can look at it and, and as the data shows then we can identify something next grant cycle or next time we have a project but not right now unfortunately. All right thank you very much Mr. Hing. Mm -hmm. um, that does it for my questions and comments for city staff. Uh, do we have any other members of the commission wishing to address comments to city staff or the public? Going once, going twice. All right, uh, moving along, uh, staff comments. Um, 
so I do have one um, announcement. The city plans to implement bicycle improvements on Willow Avenue um, as part of the Lawrence Station area sidewalk and bicycle facility project. We, we, we will be hosting an online public outreach meeting on Thursday, May 27th, between 6.30 and 8 p.m. You can join um, the meeting by watching it on the Sunnyvale City Clerk's YouTube channel at um, youtube.com slash Sunnyvale meetings. And on the YouTube page, it will also have information on how to join on Zoom if you would like to provide public comments. And this, um, this project will be brought to BPAC later, um, later on this year as well. Thank you so much. Um, do we have any further, any uh, lingering questions for staff? Uh, one thing, since For the, um, the committee, uh, it sounded like none of the other, none, no committee members attended the full budget workshop. I uh, just wanted to give you an update that city council did um, vote to fund uh, Poplar, the sidewalk improvement, sidewalk gap closure on Poplar, um, in addition to Tasman. So uh, stop, if once it's approved at the at the June council meeting, the budget, and then next fiscal year, we'll start working on both projects, both steady issues, sorry. Fantastic. All right, thank you, Mr. Ng. Uh, Commissioner Cordes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanna communicate with staff if they have heard from VTA about uh, VTA wanting to present the Tasman Complete Streets study to the Sunnyvale VPAC. You look surprised when I mentioned it earlier in the evening. So I don't know, has VTA reached out to you to schedule that? Um, Not yet, okay. No. Hopefully they will be doing that. Uh, they may not, you know, cause it's right. It doesn't actually extend into Sunnyvale. So I'm wondering why that's like, why they haven't reached out to the Sunnyvale VPAC yet. Cause they reached out to Santa Clara and San Jose VPACs to present the final complete Tasman complete streets safety plan or Fleet Street study. Um, is that something that we can request that, or do you, do, should we talk to VTA if we want to hear that? That's, we can, we can talk to the project manager and then, and then talk to him about it. All right. So, so please consider that a request for a future uh, BPAC agenda item. I would also be very interested in having that as an agenda item. Okay, uh, moving along then. Uh, next up, we have our information only reports items 21-0586 BPAC 2021 annual work plan. Do we have anything um, with the annual work plan that needs uh, mentioning? Next month, it looks like we have uh, the LSAP sense of place, uh, Java Drive Road Diet, a, the recognition of service, and an update on the utility stuffer. Um, let's see here. And I do see an item yet to be scheduled for Snail and San Miguel active transportation improvements. Do we have an update on when that might be coming? Um, we currently don't have an update on that. Um, I believe that um, city staff is going to be working on um, on putting together a request for proposal to um, to for that project um, likely later this year. So we haven't started oh. on the project. We don't have a consultant on board to start on the project yet. Remind me of the scope of this project. Is this for implementing things already listed in the ATP? Or is this for coming up with new things? Or what is the high level so, scope of this project? So we have included, so it was a grant that we obtained a couple of years ago. However, um, we work with um, Caltrans and CTC to, inc to actually modify the scope um, quite a bit to include a, bun a, a, a lot of the improvements that were identified near the um, San Miguel Elementary School and Columbia um, Middle School um, in the, where, where, you know, in the ATP as part of the Safe Route to School improvements. So this project is including a lot of the improvements that were identified in the ATP for these two schools. 
Got it. So this is this is a an implementation, not a plan. This is a, an implementation type project. Not Correct. A, got it. Okay. That's very helpful. Thank you. Cool. Uh, do we have any further discussion or questions on the work plan? Seeing none, 21-0587 active items list. Um, do we have any comments on the active items list? All right, seeing and hearing none. Do we have, oh, it might be worth providing a brief update on the Maud Avenue bike lane final decision because I believe that happened after our previous meeting, correct? Yes, that will be brought to city council for consideration on May 25th, so this coming Tuesday. Oh, city council hasn't already voted on it. I'm sorry, I'm, my apologies. Um, excellent. Uh, okay, so any further questions on the active items list? Seeing none. Uh, and then finally, the 2021 deferred study issues. Any comment or discussion on those? All right. Unless anyone else has any other, any pressing business, I am going to declare this meeting, this May 20th meeting of the Sunnyvale Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission adjourned at 8.34 p.m. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Good night. Bumper says goodbye, good night. Honorary Commissioner Skittles. This is Bumper. <laughs> this is Bumper. Bumper has yeah. a bow tie. Bumper has a bow tie. <laughs> night, Thank everyone. you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye everyone.